All right, I threw myself off with there being the third question in that segment, so we're starting with Malachi in this one, and now this one is going to be about uh, adventure modules and campaign settings. So, Malachi, how do TSR's adventure modules compare to those of Watsis, and which do you find more effective for gameplay, immersion, and emergent storytelling? Okay. Clearly, in my opinion, 1E hands down has the best modules. You can rip them apart easily. You can put them into different settings easily. Very modular, very evocative, very easy to run. And stuff like the Village of Hama, that's a great first level, great opening adventure. Really can get, you know, gives you a home base. Um, and if you take, oh, what's that one? Uh, Len Lacoff, this series, I can't think of it now, but he's got his little mini hex crawl, very open world, very easy to add your own stuff to it. Whereas Watsi is very, has a very story driven approach to their modules, especially with um, when you had three, you had, um, oh, Sunless Citadel, you know, it's a very basic dungeon crawl, but you know, there was. You could move it around, but you couldn't take it apart. You know, like Case of Chaos. You can break that up if you want. Have all these mini dungeons spread around your your hex map if you want. And then you get to 5e where it's adventure path, adventure path, adventure path. Go from this level to this level. Rinse and repeat new characters when the next book comes out. So I'll let you pick the direction you want to go. Either Watsi to TSR or TSR to Watsi. Uh, can you share an experience where you ran a module from one version of the game in a, the other version of the game? So a Watsi module in a TSR version of the game or a TSR module in a Watsi version of the game? I am... Oh, actually, I ran Keep on the Borderlands. Not Keep on the Borderlands. Um, what was the other? B What's B1? K uh, the Caves of Chaos one, right? No, that was part no, of no. The the board, no. Oh, it's hold on. Oh no, it's not over there. Oh, um, in, in search of the unknown. Of the, uh, yeah, in search of the unknown. I actually ran the you, Goodman Spirit. Games version at uh, my gaming store when I first got back into running games. And okay, it was good. I enjoyed it. They did a great job converting it. The players had fun. You know, they added some neat stuff that could actually expand on. With that, without afterwards. spoilers, tell us uh, tell us a little bit about what changed and what made what made it feel old, but also be new. Well, the old part was, I mean, there was you had the mimic door was still there. All the different pools that of uh, liquids in the one room that was all there. Everything was there. The original storyline was there, but at one point uh, they added extra tombs for the two people that built the dungeon and then the one his uh came up his wife or his lover's ghost was there it was stuck there and there was the option that the party could help her move on you know go to the you know go down the light so to speak okay so you know you had that option here's more gameplay after you're done all right, let's uh, let's move over to Bear. Bear, how do TSR adventure modules compare to those of Watsis, and which do you find more effective for gameplay? I think I know what the answer to those. This are going to be very similar you, to mine. What do you think uh, for gameplay immersion and immersion storytelling. What do you think the answer? I is? have a let's funny see. feeling you're like me, and you don't really use modules. Thank you. So I yield the floor to Harmony, who remembered her favorite house rule. <laughs> <laughs> um. Uh, yeah. Uh. I used to run more adventure modules than I do now. I still find them somewhat useful to tear pieces of them. Um, I would say my favorite TSR adventure module is um, Isle of Dread. Um, mm. I just, I enjoy exploration, hex crawls, like you never know what's going on because that stuff lends itself well to a sandbox adventure. I think um, Isle of Dread can be run pretty well out of the box fairly effectively. Um, I've also heard that it does well for faction play, though I haven't quite tried it with uh, different players controlling different factions, but that's that's not really uh, what we're talking about here. Um, I, I, I really like Isle of Dread, though. I would say that's my favorite TSR adventure that I've read. You're the second person um, to say that? I mm -hmm. own it. I've never run it. I have I, it. Yeah. It's, I, I love dinosaur modules, so. Me too. <laughs> <laughs> I triggered bear. 
Okay, so my favorite WOTC adventure is probably um, 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 the one in the jungle with the Tomb of Annihilation. Annihilation. Because I like dinosaurs. No, but see, but also, I, I'm going to disagree with uh, whoever said that um, WOTC doesn't produce good adventure modules. I'm going to say they don't produce good adventure modules in the past five years. If you go back more than five years, uh, they actually have some very solid ones. Lost Minds of Phandelver is a very solid starting adventure that has it, that is good for new dms i'm sorry you're gonna say something there what is it oh i was gonna say go back even further with watsy red hand of doom red hand yeah. of doom is awesome that was my favorite adventure i've ever run by watsy and i actually forgot it existed thank you for mentioning it That's that one, one was so cool just because the players got to decide like exactly what they were going to do to prevent the um the hobgoblin incursion right uh that one was awesome um but yeah, WOTC has some solid adventure modules, and I, I'm, I'm I'm sorry, but they do. Um, then, uh, yeah, Lost Minds of Phandelver was good. Their, their take on uh, their take on Ravenloft and Five E was actually really good. Curse of Strahd is good. Ooh, ooh. I, so I like it like when um, I don't run, I don't run as written. <laughs> I know where you're going next. But you, I like you it. need to what? remember no? all the changes <laughs> are only in the coffin. Okay. Well, I'm I'm also I'm talking sorry, broader I, Ravenloft. I don't know Curse of yeah. Strahd itself that much. The broader Ravenloft nonsense that Five E changed and you know oh, swapped okay. and all that other nonsense. Oh. I just get nope, nope. I immediately just like won't even hear it. <laughs> Curse I don't, of Strahd is pretty much Raven the Ravenloft module converted to Five E. All right, let, let's uh, let's let her finish though. It is, but they okay. So I wouldn't take off the uh, paladin and cleric stuff they did. They they unnerfed. So basically, in uh, in Ravenloft, they're like, okay, so in the original Ravenloft, they wouldn't let um, paladins have their full power or clerics have their full power. They're like, okay, anytime you use like any sort of holy spell or something, Strahd's gonna know, or the the, the dark powers of uh, the realm are going to know about that, mm -hmm. and they're gonna come try and corrupt you, or there's a percentile die roll, and they might try to corrupt you. They, they don't have that in 5e, but I mean, I use them anyway, because I, I, I do what I want. Um, but anyway, <laughs> so I, I actually like their take on that. But I mean, they, they have some, if you go back, Five years or more, they have some solid ones there. Not all of them are solid. Their their uh, Tyranny of Dragons one was hot garbage. But um, aside from a couple, they they have some real gems there. So I'm gonna say that both companies put out adventure modules of good quality. I like Keep on the Borderlands. I like uh, Isle of Dread, but also Tomb of Annihilation is really good and. Um, Lost Minds the, of the, ori the original or the or the <laughs> modern one? Um, I, I, the only Tomb of Anni wait, Tomb of Annihilation, right? Yep. Okay. The, I'm going to be very honest here. The only one I've read is the modern okay. one, and I Fair actually quite like. Now with the Ravenloft stuff, I've read a lot of Ravenloft stuff, but with the with Tomb of Annihilation, I've just read the modern one. I had a coworker so, that was talk telling me about his exploits through the Tomb of Annihilation, the modern one, for over the course of a few months. So I, I heard a lot about the recent one. Seems it's got similar aspects to it, from what I understand. Yeah. And it could be just because it's a remake of older stuff that they were able to keep enough that it didn't suffer too badly in quality. But things like Red Hand of Doom, Red Hand of Doom was so good. That was my favorite third edition adventure. And I don't believe that was a remake of anything. Mm -mm. I, I might be wrong on that. Okay. Well, I've had a lot of people say that Lost Minds of Phandelver, no matter what game you're playing, whether it's D&D or even anything else, is the best introductory uh, adventure that somebody could run for pretty much any fantasy game. Yeah, it's it's got everything. It's got goblins, it's got dragon, it's got like um, all all the basic fantasy stuff, and it's sandboxy. It lets the players run investigations, decide what to do. It, it it's not a railroad, and I I love it for that because it's an introductory adventure that teaches a DM how to let their players have free reign and accomplish a vague goal, however they want to do it. And murder all the players with a goblin ambush as the first encounter. <laughs> yep. Exactly. <laughs> hey, it, it, th it throws you in hard, all right? Teach them the loss of character early. <laughs> yes. Yes. And you got to break them in somehow. <laughs> all right. We didn't get any super chats this time, and I don't think I starred anything either. I did not. So I think we're just going to jump right on into the next question. Maybe we'll 
catch up a little bit on the time here. So, Bear, this is for you. Oh. How do you compare the campaign settings created by TSR, like Greyhawk, Dragonlance, insert your favorite setting there, to those created by WotC, like the Earth Dawn Rip, I'm sorry, Eberron, and the updated Forgotten Realms? Okay. So, first of all, Greyhawk is Greyhawk. Gen X, it was probably our first campaign setting, and it's a wonderful campaign setting, and if you really get into it and you pay attention, there's a lot you can do with it, and you can have fun. But I mean the gold box. I don't mean anything else that came out afterwards for it, because they ruined it with the Greyhawk Wars and stuff like that. Forgotten Realms Grey Box, amazing. Fantastic. So much room to play. So much room to do anything you want. Eh, Forgotten Realms post Grey Box, dear God, like I say, 5th edition, the Forgotten Realms are everywhere outside the Sword Coast because they don't care about them. They don't exist other than the Sword Coast. So that's the We forgot the other realms existed. Ah! Um, never was a Dark Sun fan. I know heresy, but whatever. Oh, no, go I'm with Conan. you. Go play Conan. Go play John Carter of Mars. Dark Sun's stupid. To use a max term. Um, Al-Kadim. Yeah, if you want. I liked it. Uh, Caratour, yeah, if you want. Um, what else is there? Jakunder, I've never played, so I can't say anything about that one. Uh, well, but right. when, you, when, you, when you compare them, though, for example... I have, I have a, I've okay. got to play some going. Okay. Birthright, amazing, so good, in fact, that George R. R. Martin stole parts of it for Game of Thrones. That's how good it is. Um, and then we get to Watsi. Let's see what we got. Eberron. Garbage. Dumb, stupid. Uh, why didn't I play D D online? Because it was set in Eberron. I'm not interested. Thanks. Goodbye. Uh, Forgotten Realms is. I, oh God, I hate that setting so much. Fiery Passion of a Thousand Suns. Um, what other five E settings are there? Oh no, that's four E. Nentir Vale is amazing, and I'm actually running an Nentir Vale Bare Bones Fantasy campaign right now because it's a great setting. Otherwise, most of the Watsy stuff, the the. The, with, the, the TSR stuff in, encouraged you to use your imagination, mm -hmm. encouraged you to develop sections, expand sections, and do what you can with it. The WotC stuff goes, here, everything you could possibly want, and it's all stupid, by the way, in case you're wondering. What the hell do your players do in the Forgotten Realms if the Harpers exist? If the Harpers exist, why do you even do anything? Well, we're going to go save Baldur's Gate. Shouldn't the Harpers be on that? They are the Harpers, after all. Or maybe the Knights of Mythic Dranor can come in and take care of it. It's dumb. It's overpowered. It's overwritten. It's overdeveloped. It's, there's no room for creativity in it anymore. None. We used to Zero. say that everybody in Forgotten Realms was born with a plus two sword in his hand. Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, Moss Eisley Cantina, right? Like, yep. every race living happily. It's sad, bad, sad, and perfect harmony. You know? And it's garbage. Uh, so I think TSR created better settings that were more useful for a GM to customize and make their own. I think if you have no time and you don't have the ability, like, you know, you got a full-time job, kids, the whole nine yards, use the Watsi stuff because it's all laid out for you. You can just, just plug and play and have a great time. You actually answered like three of the <laughs> three of the follow up questions. So once again, I'm not giving you one. So there, because you actually answered them. So I'm going to move on to <laughs> Harmony Ginger here. And uh, same question for you: uh, How do you compare the campaign settings created by DS TSR again, like Greyhawk, Dragonlance, whatever, to those created by WotC, like Eberron and the updated Forgotten Realms? So um, I have a very poor lack of knowledge on this question because I am and oh gosh, Bear's not going to like me. I am a 80s and 90s Forgotten Realms kid. Um, I loved I, I loved all those books. I read a bunch of those books in the 90s, so I'm just like I just run there mostly for my developed setting games. Um, I do have a game that's run twice a week that's um, with different players that is in a setting that the players created and I quite prefer that one but that's not the question um I I normally run in uh just 90s forgotten realms I don't do the new stuff because it's dumb um but uh, I also don't know that a whole lot about Dragonlance I read like one Dragonlance book but I I don't think that's enough to judge the setting on um is is decent 
I, I don't even remember. I highly was. suggest the first edition Dragonlance Adventure hardcover book if you really want to learn about it without spending a billion dollars on box sets and so forth. But that first edition hardcover book is everything you'd need to know if you care. I would say my favorite setting that I... I I think this was a TSR, but uh, I would say my favorite setting. I, I really like I like Ravenloft, and I like um, I, I like the domains of dread. I think they're fun. Um, but I I don't know enough about a whole lot of other settings. I played a game in Eberron, and I thought it was kind of silly. Um, <laughs> I mean, I've never played in Dark Sun. I can't say much about Dark Sun, so I have a I have a very huge lack of knowledge here this is i, I have an appreciation for dark sun even though i don't like it because dark sun did i'll say like what dragonlance did it took the core rules and then adjusted them to we want a setting that's based on these core rules but is unique and while i don't like dark sun i absolutely appreciated that where greyhawk mistara and forgotten realms were basically just the core rules with different dressing on it i i'm oversimplifying but I, th I think people will get where i'm coming from when i say that okay i mean i the other one i have enjoyed in the past is Greyhawk, but like mm -hmm. I, to be honest i'm not sure that i know enough about enough different settings to say how they compare i mean you can totally see how forgotten realms has become the default setting and they water it down a whole lot and a lot of times you like see you read about characters in forgotten realms you're like that was someone's pc um I, I don't know. I, I, I like the old books. I enjoy the Drizzt books and stuff like that. It's not like the pro the pinnacle of literature. I, I'm going to be real about that. It's not the best thing you can ever read. It, it's not like Appendix N level stuff, it, but it's fun brain candy. Sure. No, absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, Engine Joe, uh, I don't think you read the comment because nobody's asking you to get Streamlabs. <laughs> um <laughs> All right, Malachi, we'll bounce on over to you with that same question. Again, I will read it, though, so that uh, people in the audience can remember what it is. How do you compare the campaign settings created by TSR to those created by WotC? Okay, uh, TSR, what they did with their campaign settings was show you what you can do with a few small tweaks to the system to create your setting. You could really do a lot with some small tweaks. I think Dark Sun was the pinnacle with character gen, the money, there's no metal, how, you know, how that worked out, you know, starting a little bit of a higher level. What Watsy did was they took all this great and evocative stuff and crapped all over it. It just made it this, <laughs> just so, I can don't want to be in the real world when I'm gaming. Ravenloft for 5e. Okay that it's just there's so much real world stuff in that i am here to leave the real world for a little bit to be something i'm not to adventure when i can't in the real world i don't need the real world in my game okay uh i'm gonna open this up to all three of you uh wait where was it uh hold on Sorry, I lost the question. I was gonna, okay, I don't care if you pick TSR or if you pick WotC. Just pick a side for the purposes of your discussion point. Uh, and again, it's an optional question. You don't have to answer it if you want to. But how did TSR or WotC's approach to campaign settings shape the way you build your own worlds? And can you provide an example? And start with whomever wants to jump in. I, For me, it's... Don't... Try not get to constrain your imagination. Dragonlance has always been one of my favorite settings from TSR. And after I got the box set for Tolatus and I looked at that, the lava, the glass warriors and everything, I was like, this is so cool. This is so different. I, I can do anything with this game. Have at it. Okay, anybody else? Oh, I got one. Do you know what I learned from the WotC campaign settings or the WotC take on Forgotten Realms specifically? I, I, I learned how easy it was to throw bullshit out. I, I'm sorry. You told me not to curse. It's already <laughs> happened. You're, it's, it's okay. okay. Um, I, I, I learned how, how easy it was to throw BS I didn't like out. 
Like, um, how political can I get? Say what's it. Fine. Okay. As long as you're not telling people to vote for somebody or causing people <laughs> on my stream to be like, oh, you're all a bunch of right wing no. extremists okay. like everybody likes to call me. <laughs> there is a um, WOTC module. I, I might get in trouble for this one, so I'm very sorry. There is a WOTC module <laughs> that there. has a, an NPC in it, and it spends a whole paragraph detailing how if the players assume that she is a she, she will politely correct them that she is a they. And I'm like, how no. is this worthy of a paragraph in a book? How? Mm-hmm. No, and how, there, why are I you will never use they in the singular this? so. Right. Why is this worthy of the space? I, I can't. It, it's so, a so you, you remember when I was talking earlier about backward things? So that's what GNS Theory or Magazine, whatever the hell his dumb, stupid channel is called. He and I kind of got that back and forth on where it's like, I'm going to put that stuff in there and it's up to you to take it out because that says who you are. It's like, no, if it isn't relevant to the adventure, that should not be put in there at all. Right. It, it was it was a, a waste of space. Um, B, it was bringing modern politics and uh, modern like sex politics into mm-hmm. a game that's supposed to like, I'm not going to say that Forgotten Realms is meant to simulate a medieval world, <laughs> but I mean, it just seemed like way out of place. And I'm like, why? Why is this here? Uh, the book was Dragon Heist, by the way, Waterdeep Dragon Heist. So um, if anybody wants to fact check that, but uh, anyway, I, I learned that I can throw out things that I, I don't. I don't like. Sometimes I take like uh, dungeons or adventures from them, but like I, I don't. I don't really take a whole lot from a uh, from modules. We aren't talking about modules anymore. We're talking about setting books. I'm sorry, it's late for me. All right, go <laughs> on. <someone else. laughs> You're fine. Um, well, I mean, but the concept was how uh, do you? I mean. How did TSR or WOTC, your choice, approach to campaign settings shape the way you build your own world? So if that includes the modules, I mean, settings come with modules, so there's nothing wrong with inherently talking about the modules uh, as well. Yeah. Uh, I, I mean, there, there's a lot of... Uh, yeah, so, man, I learned how to not do a lot of things from 5e Forgotten Realms. <laughs> um, <laughs> No, imagine introducing like some really cool factions to your world and then doing absolutely nothing with them. Sorry, I just censored my language there, but uh, do, doing nothing with them. Like like Bear was saying, oh, you have this covert institution that's meant to topple dictators. Do they topple any dictators? No? Okay. <laughs> and just so oh. folks out there understand real quickly um I, I it's not a hard rule but yes for people who've been watching for a long time they'll be like wait why are they worried about cursing on the friday stream I, I, long story short i've had a bunch of people say hey i'd like to watch this stuff with my kids your your new format is very open to a lot of people watching maybe tone down the cussing that's all i've asked i have i'm not stopping anybody i'm not going to scold anybody but yes i have asked all the panelists to to tone it down myself included hopefully i'm succeeding if they fail Sorry, if they you know if they succeed, well, there you go. You know, so I, I'm not stressed thing, over it. The only thing more anno- annoying than me cursing is me uh, attempting not to <laughs> <laughs> censoring myself and complaining about it. So I'm sorry, Malachi. There's you're gonna one, you just say something? Yeah, there's one thing I did learn about your another thing about your campaigns from your settings from TSR. Don't change the rule system. Their biggest mistake they ever made with the campaign setting was moving Nistara from basic to 2E. Hmm. It should have stayed basic. Fair enough. Okay. So here's what I've learned from TSR and Watsi campaign settings. Make my own. There you go. All right. Uh, um, I had a note written down that I was going to say. And I, oh, no. I, we're going to read chat here because... Uh, Yes. Oh, so next segment. So we are done with segment three now. Uh, we're going to move on to segment four in just a moment, which is the last segment. I, we're kind of catching up. We're a little overboard, but we're kind of catching up on the time here. It's going to run late again, but great conversation with these guys. I love the input that they're making, even when, you know, Bear and, and Harmony on a couple occasions said, you know, I don't have as much knowledge in this. No, this is good information because sometimes having that more modern perspective and not being as involved you know, in the actual deep dive knowledge of what happened in the 80s gives a, a perspective that's necessary out there and vice versa. Somebody's like, well, I only know TSR, I don't know anything else. Uh, trying to have a perspective on 5e 
kind of seeing it from the outside, there's nothing wrong with those perspectives. I think the conversation is great. You guys in chat are hopping. This has been a fun stream so far. But the next uh, the next segment is going to be on community and cultural impact. That's when the comments that were recently made a couple minutes ago are probably going to really show their rear their ugly heads. But before we get there, let's look at the super chats. Which uh, not sure I had any super chats, but uh, so we had uh, this one up here though. Uh, membership Man of War six six five neighbor the beast member for twenty four months. He should have that two by his name now. Congratulations. Sir, appreciate that. He says one e deserts of desolation series is a thumbs up, and Max is referring to uh, cause of Strad recut. <laughs> what? <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah, I read some of the stuff that. As a matter of fact, we have an old rant video. If you're a member, you can find it somewhere. There's an old rant video where we went off on what they did, gender swapping and and whatever else they were doing with uh, with Ravenloft and so forth. And yeah. Um, Ebron is awesome. Shut your mouth. No, because Ebron... Okay, first of all, Ebron is a piss-poor copy of Earthdawn. If I wanted to play a high fantasy game with freaking rock people walking around, I would just play Earthdawn, which has it baked into the game, not some stupid setting with... Uh, with uh, Was it magic uh, gas-driven lamps like the 1800s and so forth? No, Ebron is trash. And uh, if you like it, well, that says something about you. <laughs> Ebron should have been in a different system. So my my favorite, I just remembered that my favorite established setting is that one little domain of dread from Carter with like the lady that flays men alive and turned her daughters into bells or something. That it's pretty metal. I, I can't remember what it's called, but that's a lot my of the Carter stuff is actually based on some sort of Asian trope, whether it's Japanese, yeah. Chinese, whatever. So a lot of that stuff is taken historical context. Yeah, yeah, uh, with, I love with, that one. Without diving too deeply into it, again, people can find... Ooh, I don't know if that's private. I don't think it's private. I think it's members only. We went off on the Asian podcast a few years ago when they were like, oh my god, Oriental Adventures is racist. So we brought on my actual Japanese wife to talk about that. <laughs> She's like, why do you people worry about it? It's imagination and fantasy. Who cares? <laughs> you know, like like <laughs> the Japanese don't care about your cultural appropriation nonsense, okay? Uh, and the, oh, it's exotic and mystic Asia. They don't care. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, my my sisters are Chinese, and I talk to them about this stuff, and they're. they're I mean, I they think it's cool that uh, that that we play in Chinese inspired worlds because um, right? I think Carter is inspired by China, not just, or is it well, just a it's, it's it's a it's a hodgepodge of yeah okay. or, Oriental yeah. basically yeah I think yeah yeah different areas there are different ones okay mm -hmm. okay the 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 pieces that I've played, which really extend very little beyond their domains of dread, because I enjoy those. Um, those were Chinese inspired, but, uh, oh yeah, okay, that's what it was. Thank you, Wobble, Wobble Rocket. It was, uh, I think it's called Ika. I don't know okay. how to say it. Um, I enjoy that one. That's well, my favorite. Ikath, I think another people. way of saying China, so uh, it would make sense. Ikath would make sense. Yeah, that makes sense. But um, I enjoy that little one. Nice. It's like, Really tiny. I'm sorry. No, that's just just remember, folks. It's cultural appreciation, not appropriation. Don't let anybody tell yep. you otherwise. Yeah. Uh, great Yakubian member for 31 months. Wow, you've been a member for 31 months. Wow, thank you, DM James. Appreciate that. Harmony Ginger, don't listen to Max. You can never trust a Capellan. They always lie. Long live the free world leagues. How dare you bring in BattleTech to our D and D discussion? Xing Xing Liao. There's some Chinese for you all. You know how I met Max was somebody in a chat was like, Max doesn't like you. And I was like, oh, no, he doesn't. That's sad. And then Max was in the same chat and I didn't know. And he's like, I didn't say that. I was like, cool. I think I said something and I didn't mean to be a dick about it. But I, I, but I was like, I don't even know who you are. <laughs> like, right. Something like that. Like, why yeah. would I be mad at somebody I don't know? You know? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. And now you're on the show. It's great. Yeah, uh, thank you. No, thank you. Uh, a nerds nerd says, "Oh no, please don't let your kids watch this dribble. The cursing is at least ranked thing to come out of the show." <laughs> We're trying oh, to be good, happy people here, not sailors, Miss Marine. And Bear the Gen X GM has been a member for ten months. Who's this guy? Help! I'm trapped inside some random live stream. Yeah, I, I'll talk. You know, if people want to know how that name came up, we can talk about it after the stream. Mm -hmm. It's uh well not after the stream but after segment four but all right there we go those are the things that oh geez I thought I just spilled something but the cap was on thank God oh. um so we are gonna move on oh I've got to do I hate 
this part because I can never find it because I'm always doing other things. There we go. Now we can, now you can subscribe. Wow. Just as a reminder, some random RPG live stream. Oh, I, I still have that on the screen. Hold on. Let me get rid of that. You popped it back on. Yeah, well, I, I think the the bottle knocked yeah. it. But, uh, just as a reminder, some random RPG live stream airs live on Fridays at 6 p.m. Central Time, except for the last Friday of the month. That's our members only stream that you know what we have to give a little something to the guys who actually pay us money right once this live stream ends the full live stream will be, remain available for YouTube members only while these four discussion segments will post to the public a month later. So just what you know if you didn't watch it live well you're watching it a month from now and we're probably all old and dead. If you enjoy this discussion, please like this video and subscribe to all the panelists' channels, which you can find in the description. 